Hi there, I'm Robert Osborne, and Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome to this new century. The big parties have come and gone, and hopefully the Y2K bug hasn't drastically affected you and yours. But if it has, always remember, things could get worse, as we're going to show you with several films about computers gone mad. And we're going to start with Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey, a film made way back in 1968, when computers were not yet a part of everyday life, and when the year 2001 was a distant 32 years in the future. But it is now, of course, only a year away, and that's something that makes this movie even more fascinating to watch. 2001 A Space Odyssey has the distinction of being the first big-budget sci-fi epic to be masterminded by a first-rate movie director. The director in this case being Stanley Kubrick, who took his time making this film. Production actually started in December of 1965, and it wasn't released until December of 1968, after three years of painstaking work. Most of it spent on these special effects. The finished film actually includes 205 effect shots. And no surprise, it won the Oscar that year for best special effects. Another surprise, though, is the fact that 2001 received no other Academy Awards, just that one. And as you watch this film, make special note of its music score. Kubrick had commissioned an original score, but at the last minute threw it all out and replaced it with familiar classical pieces. It's the first time a music soundtrack was made up entirely of classical works by the likes of Johann Strauss, Richard Strauss, and others. And by the way, don't be surprised at the very end when there's a full five minutes of original exit music, because we're going to be showing this film exactly as it was shown in its roadshow engagements back in 1968. So here's Keir Dulé and Gary Lockwood as astronauts on a journey to the moons of Jupiter with a computer named HAL. Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey. What a movie. And you know, there's always been a lively discussion as to whether or not the director, Stanley Kubrick, had something specific in mind when he named the computer in this movie HAL. As someone soon made note, each of the letters in the word HAL is but one letter away from those in the name of what was the world's most famous computer company at the time, IBM. Coincidence? Well, Kubrick always said it was. He also said in the first script of 2001, HAL was named Athena and was going to have a woman's voice. And by the way, the first person to record the voice of Hal was actor Martin Balsam. But Kubrick wasn't satisfied with the tone of Balsam's voice. So later, that track was replaced with the voice of Canadian actor Douglas Rain. Now, coming up, Hal returns. Tonight on Turner Classic Movies, our fight against the Y2K millennium bug continues when Roy Scheider journeys into space to solve the mystery of the original Discovery flight in 2010. Then things go haywire when Richard Benjamin accidentally kills robot Yul Brynner in Westworld. And Richard Iyer's friend Robbie the Robot goes berserk when a supercomputer takes over his mind in The Invisible Boy. Turner Classic Movies is on information overload here tonight. Hi there, I'm Robert Osborne, and Happy New Year to you. And since this is a time when computers are on everyone's minds, especially computers which seem to have a mind of their own, we're next going to bring back HAL for an encore. It's the sequel to 2001 A Space Odyssey and a movie that audiences had to wait 16 years to see. It took that long to get a sequel made. But as the title indicates, this second film picks up the story nine years after the events of the original film. So it's now 2010, and down on Earth, the politicians of the U.S. and the USSR are on the brink of war. But scientists from those two powers are united in their attempt to discover what happened to the spaceship Discovery nine years earlier. When the sequel was written in 1984, of course, the Cold War was still very much on between the U.S. and the Soviet Union. And at that point, no one could have foreseen that soon the Berlin Wall would come down and the Soviet Union itself would be dissolved. Now, just as the original 2001 A Space Odyssey was virtually a one-man show by its creator, Stanley Kubrick, so was this follow-up. But this time, Kubrick wasn't involved. It was Peter Himes who adapted the screenplay, produced the movie, directed it, and indeed photographed the movie, all with the blessings of Stanley Kubrick. 
Hyams had called Kubrick before he took on the project to ask for his blessings, and Kubrick said, sure, go for it. So Hyams went for it. Here are Roy Scheider, John Lithgow, and Helen Mirren, all joined by that rascal of all computers, Hal, in a movie from MGM, 2010. The author, Arthur C. Clarke, had more influence on this sequel than he had on the original film, 2001, A Space Odyssey. 2001 had been co-written by Clarke and Stanley Kubrick and was loosely based on several short stories by Clarke. Well, when Kubrick was actually shooting the film, Clarke was busy adapting that screenplay into a novel, which went on to become a bestseller. But meanwhile, on the set, Stanley Kubrick was making several changes in the story as it was being filmed. So because the two guys were working separately, there were quite a few differences between the novel and the film. But with the sequel, Clark's novel came first, and the script was adapted from it. Up next, we have another futuristic tale about computers run amok, this time starring Yul Brenner.